Whoa there, buddy. Don't you go turning that dial because we got the deal of a lifetime down at Stanky Frankie's Deli. You already know we're serving up the hottest, tastiest hoagies, grinders, lox, pasta salad, potato salad, ham salad. Although between you and me, I'm pretty sure ham salad is not really food. This week and this week only, we've got a limited time deal. You buy one of Mama's famous liver and onion smoothies and we'll throw in one pound of thinly sliced Star Wars Battlefront 2. This meat's got everything. It's got killer graphics, sound. It's got an amazing suite of multiplayer modes. It's got a pretty okay single player mode. And above all, you can be an Ewok. I mean, come on, my kids, they love these Ewoks. They're small, they're furry, they carry around sticks and they hate fascism, just like my Uncle Donnie. Great guy. The one thing it ain't got is a developer and a publisher that gives a rat's ass about it. Breaks my heart. You got thousands of players for this game that just want to see nothing more than a little bit of support and help for their favorite piece of Star Wars media. And what do you give them? Nothing. Silence. At least it's good while it lasts. Just like this deal. Make sure you come on in, ask for Mama's special smoothie, and we throw in one pound of thin sliced Star Wars Battlefront 2. That's Stanky Frankie's Deli right on the corner of 69 and your mother. Now before people go and jump down my throats about how Battlefront 2 is not a dead game, I feel that I need to address something, and that is that there is more than one kind of dead game. I've always kind of gone by that rule with these videos without strictly saying it, and what I mean is that there is a plethora of reasons that a game could be dead. They can have a low player base. They can have a continually diminishing player base compared to their peak. The developers may have abandoned whatever dedicated player base there is left, or maybe it never had any players to begin with. Star Wars Battlefront 2 falls into that third one. You see, it's got about three to 5,000 people that have just been playing this game basically nonstop since it came out. So at face value, although the game is not completely dead, with no support from EA or DICE and, you know, players that have to keep playing with the same bugs, the same networking issues, the same balance issues forever, that number is just going to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle until there's nothing left. Which at that point, EA and DICE will probably shut down the servers. The game simply cannot last without support. Do I want it to last forever? Yes. Will it? Probably not. Now I want to make sure that everybody sticks around until the end of the video where we talk about something that everyone can do that can help. Now thankfully, because there is some kind of player base, it wasn't that hard for me to find matches for the game to make the video like I've had trouble with in past games. Take Hood, for example, where I got into one match and then nothing ever again. Now, before we get to the ins and outs of how the game works, I feel that we need to address the history of the game, which is a big part of the reason why there is not a bigger player base for this game. Now, before the game came out, there was a beta, and in that beta, we got a little taste of some of the microtransactions that would be available once the game came out. These microtransactions made it possible to just straight up purchase more health and more damage for your various classes in the game, thus making you unequivocally better than everybody that wasn't doing those things or didn't grind for hours and hours and hours to get those things without paying. Now, without paying money, it was calculated back then that it would take about 40 hours of constant grinding and gameplay to unlock a single character. And there are many characters to unlock. By the way, this was in a game that already cost $60. Holy shit. So, at first, they lowered the price of the microtransactions and made it easier to purchase more things. And then after that, they removed them entirely from the game but said, yeah, they're gonna come back at some point. And boy, everybody was really happy about that. Impressive, very nice. They then generated what would become the most downvoted post in Reddit history, and that is certainly an achievement, if I do say so myself. And then their stock price went <coughs> and then they lost like three billion dollars or something, or like three billion dollars in value. It wasn't good. And then some governments got involved. Basically, EA screwed up the release of two fantastic games one year after another. So if you were looking for any more reasons to hate EA like than you already had, here you go.
The way unlocking things in the game works now is all completely linear. If you want to unlock a new gun for the Assault class, well then you better be ready to play the absolute shit out of the Assault class. The same goes for alternate abilities and health and damage upgrades. So before it was changed to just being all linear, you could just buy more health and damage and just have it permanently. You, would, you just buy being better than everyone else. Like who, who approved that? Because that person needs to be fired from every job they ever have forever. I mean, the progression is still not perfect, but we'll circle back to that. Controversy aside, uh, this game is like actually really dang good. It, it never really feels like it takes itself too seriously, which is you know, exactly what I want from Star Wars media. I don't like Star Wars stuff that's super nitty gritty and serious. So the fact that it, you know, feels just like a fun romp, that, uh, thumbs up, good. Do that more. This game is not trying to be a competitive shooter. Uh, it's 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 sloppy. It's unbalanced, and it, it, at certain points, it's complete horseshit. But I think it's better for that. The different classes in the game are really fun. The elite characters you can pick from, and the heroes and villains are boatloads of fun to just absolutely power trip on when you can use them. Except for when you forget that you suck at the game and you pick, oh, I don't know, any of the heroes or villains, and you bum rush a group of eight dudes and they kill you in like two seconds. That's not fun. It is a game where it is very satisfying to shoot people and you can play it in both third and first person. I prefer first person, it feels a little bit easier to me to play it that way, but third person feels a little bit more authentic. Galactic Assault and Supremacy are the two main modes that most people play. It's 20 versus 20, and it's a bunch of objectives. Capture this, destroy that, uh, hold this point, whatever, that kind of stuff. You'll start out either attacking or defending said objectives, and once either the attack has been quelled or whatever needs to be captured has been captured, you then switch sides and you get to play the opposite of whatever side you just played. These are the modes that most people play and it's easy to see why. You got blaster bolts flying everywhere, you got big ass vehicles terrorizing the battlefield, you got some Ewoks slinking through the shrubs, you got that one dude who's literally been Boba Fett the entire match and nobody has killed him. Can someone please kill this guy? Because my mom said that I have to go to dinner soon and if we can't get rid of him, then we're not gonna win the match and I will scream. Then you got other modes like heroes versus villains, which is really more like useless idiots versus villains villains because oh my god the heroes and villains are so unbalanced the villains are so much better who would you rather be ray or boba fett it's not even a contest shut up you got ewok hunt which is pretty much the most effective infection horror game mode I've ever seen in a regular shooter you got 18 stormtroopers who land on ewok ewok you got 18 stormtroopers stuck on endor in the middle of the night it's pitch black, you can only see with your flashlight, and I'm dead serious, like if you don't have the flashlight on, you can't see anything. Those 18 stormtroopers are hunted down by two players that are Ewoks. The Ewoks can see in the dark, uh, they can see through walls, they got little pokey sticks, and they can kill you very quickly. The stormtroopers also don't start the match all bundled together. You're all separated, so it's not like you can just stick together in a big group and kill the Ewoks when they come near you. No, you are split up, and it's very hard to find each other. As the Ewoks kill the stormtroopers, the stormtroopers turn into Ewoks, and, you know, so on and so forth. Just like any zombies or infection mode you'd see in games like Halo. If you find yourself getting bored of Supremacy or whatever other mode you're playing, I beg of you to play Ewok Hunt. It's so fun. There's also a co-op objective mode where you and three other players fight against armies of bots. And then there's the single player campaign. The story itself really isn't too bad, but playing through it... Eh, I don't know. It's less of a challenge and more like a, a very long form of target practice, shall we say? It's very easy. Graphics and sound in this game are absolutely off the walls. I mean, I can't think of any other games that even come close to comparing to the immersion level of this game. If you're looking for immersive shooters, play this game, turn the lights out, put some headphones on, and play some Supremacy. It is incredible how immersive it is. This game came out 
five years ago, and it is still one of the best looking games I have ever played. Now, full disclosure, I could not record and put this game at the highest settings possible at the same time. Uh, I got pretty close when I was recording and not streaming, but when I was streaming and recording and playing, I had to turn the graphics down considerably, so whatever you saw in my streams or in my stream footage is not indicative of how amazing this game can look. So, just so you know. And might I say that even with the graphics turned down, it still looks amazing. Now let's talk about the aspect of multiplayer that makes this game harder to get into now than ever. The progression, like I said before, is linear, so as you level up, either with your account or with the various classes, you unlock better guns, better cards to equip yourself with, everything. And these are not really like, you, you know, like other games where like you get a positive and a negative from certain things. Um, a lot of these cards are not like that. They're just straight improvements to you. There is no downside to having them. Do you want to just have more health than someone else using the same class? Here you go. Do you want to recover health every time you kill someone? Here you go. Do you want to just do more damage straight up? Here you go. If I go up against a guy who's been playing for thousands of hours with the same class, the same gun, everything, but he has his star cards and I don't, he's going to win every single time. Yeah, you could say, oh, well, what if he just unequips them? Why would he do that? Why would he not equip the star cards that make him better? Hello? I'm not saying remove the cards from the game. I'm saying remove the cards that just flat out make you better than everybody else. Because those are uh, ass. And right now, since this game has been out for five years, and I would say most of the player base are just the really hardcore guys that have been playing since it came out, most of the people you go up against are just gonna be flat out better than you, and you can't do shit about it except smash your head against the wall for hours and hours and hours until you too have those cards. That's it. And that's not to mention that some of the guns that you unlock by playing as each class are just better than the previous guns. Not like, you know, better and worse, they're just better. So much better. On top of that, the game hasn't gotten a major update since 2020. You know, EA has checked out, they don't really care about this game anymore, and DICE has plenty of other fires to be putting out right now. The game is on a steady decline, and the only thing that's really keeping people playing are bigger YouTubers like Russian Badger making videos about it and getting some attention for it. His videos are super funny, by the way. I highly suggest you go watch them, especially the Battlefront 2 videos. I want this game to live forever. It's easily one of the most entertaining pieces of Star Wars media that I think has ever existed. This is a similar case to Spellbreak for me. When I made my Spellbreak is Dead video, I wasn't making it because I hate Spellbreak and because I want it to be dead. I was making it because I wanted to talk about it, talk about what was killing it, and then ask people to rally around it and play the game. And it kind of worked a little bit. I mean, the video got about 30,000 views, and when I checked about a month after I uploaded the video, it had about 200 more concurrent players on average than it did before. So, I don't know. Could be coincidence, but... I don't think anybody else was making Spellbreak videos, so go me. And I want to call for another rally right here, right now. Now I know this is a lot more to ask than it would be for Spellbreak, because unlike Spellbreak, Battlefront 2 is not free. But what it is, is pure dumb fun. It is an overall very enjoyable multiplayer experience once you get into it. Things like Ewok Hunt and the co-op modes are a good break from the more hardcore supremacy and galactic battle modes. The single player campaign is good for target practice. I want you guys to get up there and make your own videos about the game. Upload your, your dank gameplay clips to TikTok or whatever the kids are doing these days. You know, get, get some attention, you know, make some stuff where people see it and go, oh yeah, I haven't played that since they got rid of all the microtransaction stuff and, you know, balance things out. Or, oh, hey, this game looks really fun. I never gave it a try. Maybe I'll try it now. Stuff like that. It sounds dumb, but it really works. Look at the Russian Badger's videos, for example. I mean, they're just made to be entertaining. But when I see the videos and see how much fun they have, it makes me want to play too. If you like Star Wars, it's fun. If you like Battlefield, it's fun. If you like immersive shooters, 
it's fun. Make sure you permanently hide the text chat though because people really like to use gamer words in it a lot. But really, if you haven't played this game since all the microtransaction nonsense, please give it another try. The game is so much better now than it was when it launched. Yeah, it's still got problems here and there, but overall it is a much more entertaining experience. It goes on sale for a few bucks like all the time, that's how I got it on Steam. Uh, and it's also on EA Play, so if you've got EA Play, give it a try there. And if you're burnt out from Battlefield 2042, I highly suggest this as a little sanctuary for yourself. It's much more complete and much more fun. Unless you're like really into like realistic stuff, I guess, you know, because it's Star Wars. Let me know in the comments how long you've been playing Battlefront 2, what your favorite part about it is, or if you're planning on playing it, after watching this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you've watched this far, then I love you. Thank you. Make sure you like and comment and subscribe because it really, really helps out me and the channel. Make sure you follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash resetget where I, you know, play the games that I make the videos for. I actually had a pretty decent viewership when I was playing Battlefront 2. I think I had like 13 people watching at some point, which you may look at my subscriber count on YouTube and go, oh, 13 out of two and a half thousand? That's not very good. It's it's kind of hard to translate YouTube subs to Twitch, so give me a break. It was a good night. <laughs> I'm still chipping away at the Elden Ring versus Demon Souls video. Don't you worry. It's just, you know, taking a long time because Elden Ring is a long game. Uh, but I'll be flip-flopping back and forth between dead games and Eurojank videos while I chip away at that and then finally make that video and move back into my regular rotation. And make sure you tune in for the next video where we spend an inordinate amount of time dismembering people and hating robots. See ya.